Okay, the next topic we're going to cover is the intercostal veins. And so our objective is the following, uh, to identify the intercostal veins, including their tributaries, course, and anastomoses. All right, so here we have a picture of the uh, section of the uh, thoracic wall, and there we have an intercostal vein. So what we're going to do is discuss how you get blood from this intercostal vein back to the heart. All right, here we have a right view, a lateral view on the right side of the thoracic wall, and we're going to talk about intercostal veins, which segmentally drain tissue from intercostal spaces and the overlying skin. And so there in, in yellow are showing the ribs, and in orange are the costal cartilage to articulate the ribs to the sternum. And then there, just to or orientation in pink, is the diaphragm. And then in blue, there's our intercostal veins. The upper intercostal veins, where you can see the front and the back, but not the middle, just to make the picture not so confusing. You can see the entire intercostal veins along the bottom. So there's an intercostal vein. There's an intercostal vein, and what we see is segmentally all the way down on each side, we have these intercostal veins that fill each of the intercostal spaces. And so um, in this picture, we see a rib, and we see an intercostal vein there. In this other picture, we see a rib and an intercostal vein there. Now notice, when we look at just one intercostal vein, blood in that vein can go towards the front, or blood in that vein can go towards the back. And so what we see happening is that double arrow is that blood in intercostal veins can drain to the front or the back. If blood drains to the back, they go into what's called the azagous system of veins. If blood drains towards the front, they go into this internal thoracic vein so that horizontally at every segmental level are intercostal veins, but in the front and the back is a vertically coursing vein that collects these tributaries of the intercostal veins. Let's talk about them in more detail. There's the azagous. I call them the azagous system of veins, and that's the azagous vein where the arrow is at, and it courses up, and then it goes over the right primary bronchus and dumps into the superior vena cava, and then blood dumps down into the heart. That's how we get blood from the right intercostal spaces on the back into the heart. Now, let's take that green arrow and then turn, so now we're looking directly at Instead of a lateral view, it's now an anterior view. So around the vertically on the right side is the azagous vein. Vertically on the left side is the hemiazagous vein at the bottom and accessory hemiazagous vein at the top. So why is it called the azagous system of veins? Well, let's take a look at the word azagous. The letter, the letter A means A, without. And then zygous, or zygote, Think zygomatic arch in the cheek, a zygote is in uh, sperm and egg fertilizing. It means a union, a marriage, a bringing together, a coupling, a pair. They call this a zygous system of veins because these veins are not paired. You have on the right side the azagous vein that vertically runs up and down and drains all the right intercostal spaces, but you don't have a paired structure on the other side. In fact, you have this hemiazagous and accessory hemiazagous veins. But the one thing that these azagous system of veins all do is they drain blood. The azagous vein takes from every intercostal space, drains blood, and then goes to the superior vena cava. The hemiazagous and accessory hemiazagous vein drain blood. Accessory hemiazagous from the upper intercostal spaces and hemiazagous vein from the lower intercostal spaces. But look how both the accessory and hemiazagous veins drain into the azagous and that blood will all go back to the superior vena cava. And so now let's take a look at the internal thoracic vein. Well, what we see is this vertically coursing vein like suspenders on either side of the uh, internal surface of the sternum. And that internal thoracic vein courses up and then dumps into this brachiocephalic vein. And blood from the brachiocephalic vein drains down into the superior vena cava. And blood from the superior vena cava drains into the heart. So. There's a posterior intercostal veins, and there are anterior intercostal veins. Posterior, anterior. And then they come together, and they form an anastomosis laterally in the intercostal spaces. That word anastomosis means a union, a coming together, a joining. So intercostal veins, in a nutshell. What we see is that intercostal veins are paired. We have posterior intercostal veins that drain segmentally into the azagous system of veins. Or in other words, the right intercostal spaces drain into the azagous vein. 
and the left upper intercostal spaces drain into the accessory hemiazygous vein, and the left lower intercostal spaces drain into the hemiazygous vein, and then we have anterior intercostal veins that drain segmentally directly into the internal thoracic vein. And there, folks, are intercostal veins in a nutshell.